man, from the day we first kicked it, it's been it's been you, you're nothing but a solid dude, straight up. And um I'm always gonna support you in anything you do. And um on top of that, I love what you're doing here because you're pushing the culture forward. And you letting people and you 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 schooling people with these jewels and knowledge and and if I can help you, I'm I'm there. That's that's what it's about here on this platform. And that's what's so incredible about this platform. Salute to everybody that tuned in. Man, um, shout out to everybody that's on here right now, man. I told you I was gonna bring my brother, y'all ask for him. And let me tell you something, yeah. bro. When I told him, because we were speaking about the SB twelve hundred and the Dave Ronson stuff, and I said, you know, I'm honored to be having a custom one, but I said, man. I know somebody that's on a whole nother level with that machine more than me. You know what I'm saying? And then I brought you up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and everybody like, oh, Lord, for that. And they just, they, they, man, dude, the respect and the love you got from the culture and just showing it on my page from when I seen, I said, oh, I, I just, I got to hit my brother up. I got to hit my brother up. Because nah, the love they showed you, bro, was crazy. As soon as you hit me, I'm like, yo, let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's do it. Let me, right, let me get right. settled because I was running around. Yes. But um, yeah, I mean, the love I got for the SB twelve hundred is like, man, man. I think if they would have updated the twelve hundred like they did now back then, I probably would have never changed. I think once they didn't uh, upgrade with with everything else that was going on with hip hop and technology, um. They gave that ultimate room for MPC. That's why MPC was SB twelve hundred users had no choice but to either get with an MPC or get left behind because we holding on to the twelve hundred and the nine fifty. But you know, technology is evolving around us, and we had to upgrade to the to the MP. Didn't mean that I didn't love the 12 or wouldn't continue to use the 12. Now it's like, once I found out you can, um, you can USB, you can MIDI, uh, your USB 1200 to the computer. It made me go back to the 12. And when I said go back, like people are into the 12 for different things. Some people in it strictly for the sound. Right. Some people are in it because it's the most simplest machine to ever work. Um, I was into the MPC and I love the MPC because um the funk. It's a sir, it's a natural swing with the 1200 that was just instant funk. Whether if I was watching my brother's show or or whether I was watching uh Thank you for the uh, super thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, brother. Or was it if it was large professor, you know, they made me look at that machine totally different. Mm. And what I wound mm. up doing is that became like a drum machine, right? Mm. I know we call it a drum machine, but for me it was the ultimate drum machine because programming drums on there was so incredible. Mm. It I mean was so incredible. I, you know, and not to even cut you off, because I, you know, you know, I know your passion. You gonna let me? You gonna let them know? You know, just being around somebody like like large large professors, another one that's just crazy with it, bro. Like, that's I mean, one you, of my mentors, man. Yes. When it comes to the to the drum machine, and you know, you gotta understand if you're not familiar with large professor, please um look up uh, main source breaking atoms. Yes. And, the work he did on there was so meticulous, man. Large is meticulous with it. And, yeah. you know, he was producing and helping produce Eric B and Rakim and Cool G Rap when he was in high school. Wow. So, wow. you know, the love I got for Large and what I've been able to learn from Large has been so fucking crazy. And same thing with Show. Show showed me the SB-1200, and when I got one, it seems like everything they ever told me just came right there. Like, oh, I remember they, oh, this is what he was, oh, you know, it just right. came like a tsunami, like, 
all everything they they instilled in me just came and uh like two weeks later you know i was working on like big l lifestyles of the poor and dangerous uh fat joe living fat this is like fresh when i got me a sb 1200 yeah friends of culture off and on and so that machine was my staple between that and the Kai S950 because I was time stretching on a 950 before, you know, it was uh, Pro Tools and you, you had all this technology to help you um, pitch and time stretch. I was doing it on, on a 950 when I was working on Expirato and, and True and Living. Those are actual sample scales. They're not full samples. Right. So right. between the, the Akai S950 and the 12, I was able to just do some incredible things. Mm, man, you it, incredible ain't even the word. <laughs> you did stuff that people are still trying to figure out how is that being done back then in 2023 where you can do so much stuff People are still trying to figure out how to do stuff from back then. Well, but that's that's why what I love about this channel the most is that you give people insight to what was done to evolve the culture. And you give them true insight. Yes. And what people have to understand with um, hip hop, why, you know, I was able to push forward. It was the understanding of music. And that's where DITC came in for. We was digging in the crates, whether it was James Brown at one point on Funky Technician. But then you had uh, you had a wave of jazz that was being used ultimately by Gangstar and uh, Tribe Called Quest. It was mm. into the jazz, especially yeah. Tribe. Yeah, for sure. So for they sure. was mixing Tribe. I mean, they was mixing hip hop and and jazz together. Right. Which gave it another spin. Which, right. You know, I think um, like then we got into progressive rock and, and we started using all these things. Premier, of course. Right. Premier right. Like for my sure. Brother Premier. Shout out to um, my brother Premier. For sure. Yes, man. If it Preem, you know, we talk all the time, but Preem yeah. knows, man, I love him. He's one of the greatest, if not the greatest in my book, when it comes to hip hop production on different things, because he's been doing it since the late 80s. You know, he's he's still doing it from the late 80s till now. Man, rocking. At such a high level. Rocking. And he rocking. worked with everybody. Rocking. Uh, he's taken his own crew like Group Home and, and J. Rude the Damage and made them classics. And, right. You know, worked with right. Rock Hammer, Kane, Jay Z, you know, Press One. I just talked to Premier Man, and and we had a long talk. But one of the biggest things that we talked about is that, and and this is where you know this is where the greatness come in. This is when you determine the great. There's some people that's great <clears throat> in the music part, but the overall greatness of the mind is when we talk. Premier has done it his way. He has never swayed from letting the industry dictate to him how he's going to be able to um, have the, the present success, the future success. It's always he's inventing, but he's inventing his way where it hasn't strayed away from his foundation. And that's what I see with you. And that's what I see with me. It's like, and he still finds a way to still make people feel that pressure. And that's special. That's special. What I think it is, and, and everybody here, the viewers, you have to understand, music is always going to be your friend. Music is going to get you through a lot of different things. And what I had to learn is music helped me get out the hood. Music took me around the world. Music continues to introduce me to people. If it wasn't for music, I wouldn't know EA Ski. I wouldn't know so many people because of music. And I say this in the and the greatest passion, because sometimes, and what I had to learn and what I tell my colleagues and friends, sometimes you get so engulfed with the industry and get engulfed with them pushing you all these different places. 
that you somehow music get mixed up and lost in the translate in translation, meaning you get so wrapped up in the business of the industry that when the industry doesn't take you where you want to go or when things don't go right for you, y'all take all your frustration out on the music. And when I say that, where people be like, well, you know, you doing music? No, I ain't doing that no more because this happened or, or that right. happened. And right, right, Like my right. brother Jazz Jeff told me, or oh, not me, he was telling somebody else, what did music ever do wrong to you? Right, right. Music right. never do anything wrong with you. Right. If you right. skip the music, music will take you to the greatest heights. You and know, just stick with it. Don't don't give up on it, regardless of what you're trying to accomplish. If you love music, stick with it. I mean, uh, we see people put an expiration on a passion due to what other people tell them. Right. And, and that just be that's why, in a way. With hip hop, I, I I feel like it's stagnated at times because they start to tell you, well, it's a young man's game, but shit, it's a grown person's life. You know, it's it's a difference. Yes. And they yes. try to make it an age limit, and yo, you still doing it, or you shouldn't be doing it because you at this age, man. Right, Look, man. Fucking Al Green was never worried about new edition. Right. 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 You know. Let me say this real quick. We back, man. We had a technical thing, man. I didn't turn my do not disturb on, so I didn't want to be froze up the whole time we was talking. So we back. So I let a couple of y'all get in here before we finish up this conversation. One of the big things that you said that uh, that was true is how the music game, people feel like the music game has beat them down to the point where they're mad at the music. You oh, know? It's just, we was talking about you earlier, John Connor. If that's you. No, I don't think that's the same John Connor. Okay. That's not the same. Right. That's, that's not the same John. That's a different John Connor. Yeah. But um, yeah, they let the, the music industry beat them up. And yeah. And I tell people in real life, you ain't your age, you your energy. So if you feel Facts. old, then you old. Facts. But if you if you going at a high rate and you could still do all the incredible things you're doing, why not keep doing them? Like right. I said. You never had Al Green worried about New Edition. You ain't never hear Al Green say, look, I need to make me a candy girl. Al was doing love and happiness and let's stay together. Right. And that's what it's about. It's about you know, pushing this forward. You know, bro, what I've, I've noticed with a lot of the cats that have, you know, matured in the game, you know, came in the game from the late 80s, 90s, and now here we are in 2023. And the biggest thing that I see with a lot of the artists that that start kind of not believing in what they can do is the fact that they believe in what they see right now. They don't understand content is king. Knowledge is king. When you have knowledge, and I'm talking about real knowledge, where you know right from wrong, that's going to always win. Right. And, and it showed even with Marvin Gaye when he was, you know, going up against Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy didn't want him to make that, uh, you know, send um, the uh, 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 what's going on. That that whole right. album, they was like, no, 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 no. We need you to stay in the, the you and Tammy Terrell, stay in that, stay <laughs> in that, stay in that lane. You know what I mean? And um, he was like, no, nah, man, I need to talk because, you know, it was the Vietnam War. It was all of this stuff that was going on that he had on his heart. This stuff was sitting on his heart. Right. You know what I mean? And when that man spoke from his heart, man, he changed the culture, man. Yeah. He changed What's the culture. What's going on? Like, that was deep. That because was, it was the natural. Mm-hmm. Changed the culture. And I, and I just really believe that, you know, and I tell people this all the time. I don't agree with a lot of the veterans and a lot of the older cats because a lot of these cats, they want to still fit in and feel like they're 15, 16, 20, 21. I mean, to each his own. But I feel like as you get to be older and you become a veteran, you also you actually have way more power than the youth because of the knowledge that you have. And I think right. this is what separates. This is what they do. A lot of the gatekeepers in the industry they try to separate our knowledge from the youth. You dig right. what I'm saying? Because people got to really understand this. 
The only reason why the youth could be in this playing ground is because you're trying to ostracize the veterans from telling them how they're going to be played in this industry. And I'm watching all these youth and they're suffering and they're suffering right. and they're suffering, but they don't have the mentors and the ones to speak because they try to silence what we say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we, we touch, we always touch on this and yes. I feel as a person that's been in the game since 89 that helped put bricks in this building and and put my blood, sweat, and tears into hip hop. I'd be damned if I'm gonna let somebody tell me I can't tell you how the building is being built. Facts. You're not gonna tell me if Facts. I don't like the material that's being put in the building, because we was putting bricks. And now you wanna put styrofoam and whatever shit in there. And I'm telling <laughs> you, like, look, man, this ain't it. We gotta put bricks in it. We gotta keep it, you know. I'm not saying you got to do everything I say. Right. But I should have some say. For the I foundation. Should, right. I should the have some the input. Right. You know, you're not going to have me help build hip hop and then tell me I can't say what I feel about what's going on in today's culture. Facts. And you know, today's you know, culture, I'm not mad at today's culture. All I just say with today's culture just be be knowledgeable of the origin. Be you knowledgeable know I mean? of the origin. You can't tell me you're doing new hip hop if you're not familiar with the origin or how it came to be. Facts. Now, Facts. if I'm not saying you got to do what the older artists did or, or how it started, but have some knowledge of it. I can't right. come in and say, hey, I want to be a doctor. Cause I'm nice with pills and cough drops. No, they're gonna tell me like, "Look, right. man, right. you need to have some degrees, and it's a science to it." Right. And right. it's a science to hip hop. It's right. a science. Like we started off talking about the SB twelve hundred, and we talked about all this. Um, we're gonna say drum machines with limitations, right? Right, right. That's what makes some of the people from my era so incredibly great is because we did some amazing, incredible things with limitation. And when you listen to those early albums in the late 80s, the early 90s, the we were working with limitations. But look how, how the music sounds. Can I say and this real how, quick? How timeless it is, right? I want to say this, and don't forget that thought. You're three thousand percent correct, and I just spoke on this the other day, and you just shook a nerve again. You're absolutely right. It's like less was more because it made us use our. We had to really think. You know, I had this conversation with Dave Ronson, and he said he could never in a million years imagine. He didn't even make the machine for us to speed it up and slow it down. He said, what y'all did in the culture of hip hop was amazing. He said, I wouldn't have never thought about that in a million years. I didn't think about making a machine to do that. He said, and he paid nothing but homage to the culture and to you. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, a lot of people speak of you when he was working on the, on the whole Ronson, you know, SB-1200. I, I had a chance to sit down with Dave Ronson, um... And we sat. I went out, flew to where he was at. We sat. We billed for about an hour. We went, had lunch, came back and talked again. He took me around his spot. He was showing me, you know, the, the parts and pieces of the SB-1200. And we had a real deep discussion. And I was glad you put us back in contact with each other mm -hmm. because we had lost contact. I never for had sure. a number or anything. So I salute you definitely on that. For sure, but for sure. The 1200, like I said, is like a, um, it's like the drum machine because the 1200, I know nowadays <laughs> you get sample packs and libraries and drum kits, but for us, the 1200 was that, right? Because we would go get records. We hear a, a specific kick, a specific snare, a specific open hi-hat. And we would piece drums together. I'm going to take the kick from this record, the low kick from this record, the hi-hat from this record, 
the snare from this record and we made these drums and you listen and go, God damn, you know, what, what are these drums? And you felt great because these drums were your signature. You know, you created these drums that went to the record and, you know, went on these records. And some people said, well, where you get that snare from? Oh, I got that snare from Chuck Jackson. Oh, I got this from that. And it made people dig. Right. And the more we dug, the right. more creative the music got. Because right. we in the world of limitations, right? So right. we right. only got like 10 seconds on a 1200. So you had to get very creative with the 1200, which brings me back to what I'm about to say. Mm. A lot of this stuff in hip hop was done with limitations, whether sonically on a Kai S900 or the 950. Great machines, you could sample more, but mm. you couldn't get stereo. It, it would mush your stereo into mono. Yeah. You know, so we had yeah. to get creative where <clears throat> we would take a turntable and plug one side into channel one and plug another side into channel two. And we love to get stereo records because the bass line could be on the left or the right. The drums could be on certain records. Stereo in the seventies allowed you to grab certain aspects of the record that you wouldn't normally get straight up on a stereo. Mm. You know, with you'll have both sides on a stereo but if you could pan it left to right and get one of the sides, you know, we got creative in that aspect. We got creative in uh, building our own drum libraries. Like, I still have a lot of the 90s. Everything I've worked on in the 90s, I feel like 95% I still have the disc that created these these arts of work. Now, let me, let me say this before you go further. That's crazy. You still having all of those discs after all of these years? Bro, I wish I could find all my discs. But you got to understand, just like how they got master reels and the, the uh, record labels on the masters, that's not definitely all the way true. It's not true. If you have your floppy disc or whatever you used in the 90s, to create their master, yeah. then you have the master of facts. their master. No, that's that's all facts. That's that's all and I've been I've been saying that for a while. Even when I did the blast if I have to, I said, Yeah, they have the masters, but I have the master, master copy of that. Right. Really, and, and that is the real pure master, period. Right. Because so, you have the actual files, the actual mm -hmm. stems of the files, they have the tape of it. But you have the actual you have ingredients. the, the disc yeah. with the ingredients the disc, still yeah, on yeah, the yeah. disc. Definitely. From that yeah. late night, 1 a.m. or whenever you recorded it. Thank you, you Mr. Black, still, for the super thanks. You still have that master disc. Right. So I'm able, I, I recently record re-recorded Hip to the Game. Sounds yeah. better. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a school you why I did it. Is because and let me say this before you school them. That's so dope, bro, because not only do you have the master master, but now you can go back in there with that master and you can tweak it even more sonically because, because of all the technology because of the technology today. of today. So you could take yes. that master to a whole nother level and you can go Man, and wait license you it. hear it. It sounds so dope. We added right. a little bit more instrumentation to make it a little bit more soulful. Yes, sir. And yes, um, sir. Yes, the sir. reason why I did this and um, take this note down, people listening. Yes. The reason why artists, I'm going to school you on a couple of things, artists that's, that's in here or artists that's looking at this YouTube. The reason why a lot of older artists are starting to re-record their music is because of master ownership. The problem we have with the labels is that when technology came about and they started doing all the streaming and different things, they never, like, when, I have to go back to the beginning, when we signed deals, it was three platforms that was out. It was uh, vinyl, it was cassette, and it was CDs. CDs came a little later. Yeah. So. Thank you, Eugene. Your, Thank you your lawyer was only able to negotiate what existed. So 
with that being said, your lawyer can only negotiate cassettes, vinyls, and CDs. Right. And they put this little clause in there that we can put it out on any media platform. Right. And that kind of took them into, you know, that's what took them into the future. And they're able to do, well, they're not really able. I just don't think if if rap artists or, or artists and do what the Writers Guild is doing right now, we can gain so much ground. For sure. For sure. And that's what artists should have did with <coughs> streaming and digital came. It's like, whoa, no, we're not we're not allowing this. Right. Because once again, they do have the right in that clause to put out your music on other medium media platforms. But shouldn't your artist been I mean, shouldn't your attorney been able to go in there and negotiate the terms on the new streaming? Well, you know, this is where it gets really gray areas, and this is where, you know, people can say whatever they want to say, but I'm just a realist because I understand this, is this is when you start realizing that a lot of these lawyers are in on the scam as well, because a lot of these lawyers won't even go in there because they've been a part of kind of manipulating us to settle for a lot of stuff. A lot of us just wind up settling for a lot of stuff because these lawyers are in cahoots. Well, let me put you up on some more some more knowledge here, right? What when we come into the game, you come in and you have an entertainment attorney. Right. Right? You have an entertainment attorney. And what's going on is an entertainment attorney, you try to get the most popular attorney because he has relationships with all these labels. Facts. And you want an entertainment attorney that can get you the best deal of the most money. Right. Because of his relationships. Right. The same way you give these people the power to feed you, you give these people the power to starve you, right? Right. And why I'm gonna say this is just because just because they have all these relationships with the labels, when you get into a riff with your label or your owner or your label, they're not going to fight for you because they're their friends. Exactly. I'm not going to cut off my lifeline and my future money because y'all have a problem. Facts. This is where you get a litigator. Right. See, it's a difference between an entertainment attorney and a litigator. School of school of bro. Litigator only cares who's right <laughs> and who's wrong. Facts. And if you have a case and they're telling you, like, yo, you have a case and they're willing to help you, you know, finesse are you a part of the black sheep uh lawsuit? No, I'm not, but that lawsuit is very important for artists that comes from our era. Because it's just like what I'm saying re-recording your music re-recording your music like i said i'm i'm gonna take you i'm taking you different places but re-recording your music is important because we don't recoup right this is now i gotta tell you and get into it in depth i'm gonna do it real quick so if you don't catch it catch it back and rewind what i'm talking about but i'm gonna break it down to you very quick y'all need super thanks for this because man this man is giving y'all so when, much diamonds right here. This is a when super you thing. sign a deal back in our era when we signed the deal. Let's say the budget. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it into numbers just to, <clears throat> to school you. These might not be actual numbers. Say they give you a deal for a hundred thousand. So they might give you a twenty five advance or twenty thousand advance from the hundred thousand, which leaves you eighty if they give you twenty. Right. Nine out of 10, we was getting six to seven points. So you getting six to seven points out of a hundred point pie. So if you get six points, guess who getting the other 94? <clears throat> the label. Now, when you have to recoup your hundred thousand, you got to recoup it with the six to seven points. Now, if retail price of the music was seven dollars, that's just what you recouping your money from. So if you got seven points out of seven dollars, that's um forty nine cents three quarter statutory rate. 
that you have to recoup. So every time you sell a record, that 49 cents goes towards recouping a hundred thousand. You already at a unfair advantage because you only right. got 49 cents and they got six dollars and 51 cents. You're already in the red. You're already so you have to recoup that back. Now let's break down where the eighty thousand went to, right? The eighty thousand went towards studio time, features, sample clearance, uh, engineers, mastering, whatever it took to do that album. That's where your money went. The eighty thousand, which were recorded on two inch reels, which are their masters. Right, not Thank your you, masters, select. but their masters. Right, right, right. So now <clears throat> you have to recoup a hundred thousand, right? Yeah, you get mechanical royalties. We're gonna get into that. Yeah. So you gotta recoup that um eighty thousand, a hundred thousand. You kept twenty. Right. You know, which I'm gonna break that down. So by some miraculous, incredible feat, you recoup the hundred. Shouldn't you get back? What you what you what they spent the money on, and not only that too, they have a clause in there where they have reserves. So right. when you have the reserve clause in there, that means that you're not even going to see that money because you have a return clause on if they got returns, especially when you were talking about CDs and and vinyl and all of that. So it's a return. So they freeze that money up along with what they're taking. So it's a, that's cold. So now. You recouped a hundred thousand by some mm. feet. Shouldn't you get what you recouped? Right. If all the work is on those masters and I recoup that money back, shouldn't I own the masters? Right. No, you don't. Right. Right. No, you don't own those masters. You know, so that's crazy itself. Yes. That you got to recoup something that you don't actually get for 35 years, which I'll school you on later. Mm. Right. So in actuality, you only really pocketed twenty thousand, and I think as an artist, that's all you should have to recoup if you're going right. to keep the masters. Right now, the masters are important because your work is on the masters. So anytime somebody sample off the master, or they want to use this in a film or a sitcom, here's how it breaks down. Let's say I'm going to give you 50000 to put your song in this movie. 25 of it goes towards the master and 25 of it goes towards the publishing. So break that down. So on a publishing half, you got the producer and maybe you. So 50%, 50%, y'all are splitting 25,000, which is 12,500 a piece. Since they sampled off the master, they're using the master, the label gets the other 25,000, scot free and clear. Once again, if you recouped, shouldn't you own the master and you get that 25,000? So it's a it's a very very deep game. It is. When when we're talking about you know, being on a label and what, well, yeah, it, it is so criminal. It is. But this is, uh, this is natural. This is what normally happens, right? Right. So these are the things that I had to learn within <clears throat> the game. Right. And a lot of artists uh, owed a lot of money. Artists ain't out here broke. They got you thinking you're broke. Right. Because right. you don't want to audit the label because they know it's going to cost ten to 15000 or more to exactly. audit. So you're exactly. never going to come after that money we owe you. Right. And it's a statutory limit to it, like seven years. Then that money they owe you disappears. Right. So my problem right. with the labels is that we only getting 7% and you can't find a way to truly pay the artist they 7%. Right. So it's a it's a it's an extremely wicked game. Very wicked. And I had to learn this. And you have to fight for what's due to you. It's not, you know, some people go, well, you know, it's cool. I ain't gonna even stress that. No, stress that. That right. is your work. Right. 
You're right. You, you spent all this time producing and doing what you're doing. Hey, fight for that 7%. Right. That's right. You know? I mean, so you know, a lot I of mean, artists re-record. So now if you want to use hip to the game, I could tell you, you know what? I got a master for that. If it's in your contract where you could re-record. So now when they come back to use hip to the game, you know, what happens? You use my version. Right. One, I produced it. Two, I wrote it. Right. And it's my master. So right. if they come to me for fifty thousand, I'm getting a whole fifty thousand. For sure. For sure. And that's why a lot of artists re-record. Another thing I'm gonna school you. I said you get your master's back <clears throat> in five years. There is a clause, it's a it's a it's a law where a artist can get their master's back in 35 years, but the key is is you have to put in this paperwork up to 30 three years of the release date for you to get your master's back. They don't teach you this in the game. That's I'm interesting. 30, and it's interesting the number 33 too, but that's a whole different thing. But yeah, but you, know. you can get your master's back in 35 years. So 35 years, I had my lawyer put in a paperwork for, uh, let's say what funky technician. Mm -hmm. So in 2025, Robert Hall should own, funky technician facts and these are the jewels that they don't really be dropping right and like i said an entertainment lawyer is only going to tell you give you something that's decent enough to sign right and right. and i'm gonna put underline decent and decent is what right. they think is decent you know, you said something that was really key, bro, and and I think a lot of people, I hope that didn't go over their head between an entertainment lawyer and a litigator, you know what I'm saying? Because that is very important that, we you know, we get these entertainment lawyers and they're very powerful to get you what you want, but they, but a lot of people don't know it's in their interest to get you what they want because they get a percentage off of what you get. So right. they're going to, they, so having those relationships work in your favor, but it, it works against you too if you don't understand when it gets into that okay, I'm pitted against this label. You got to know how to get somebody that has no interest in that that's in the best of your interest to do what's right. That was right. very a very important jewel, and I don't think people understand that. A lot of people fight with their lawyer, and your lawyer is not going to go ride for you. That's They're not the going to ride for you. That's the part about like, it. Is yeah. They did whatever they did to get you your deal, right. and now you have to fend for self. That's right. Incredible copyright infringement lawyer and he's taught me a lot his name is brian levinston right you know and he always schooled me and hit me to so much and he's a litigator so when i got into my wars with with certain situations he was there to litigate for me right you know and you have to share a few rights because sometimes the the, the crazy shit about it is that sometimes people can lift your music and do what they want to your music and the label won't share if your rights. Meaning it's out there in the world, but if it was the Beatles or Prince or Michael Jackson, they wouldn't let your music be out there being exploited. Facts. So Facts. sometimes as an artist, you have to share if your rights. Facts. And I've gotten to a beef with Tommy Boy on on two situations when it came to hip to the game. You know, because mm. you didn't share off my rights. When mm. AT took my music, you didn't share off my rights. Mm. When I got into the litigation with Mac Millers, because you didn't share off my rights. Mm. You know, mm. like protect my music. Right. If Somebody sample the Beatles, right? All, all over them. You're gonna be all over it like flies on shit. Sheriff, my rights. Only thing I wanted to do was protect hip to the game, right? And that's all it was. So, regardless of what you heard out there, what you heard, yeah, because there's a difference between what you heard and what's actually factual, you know. So you know, I had to share off my rights on several occasions by myself. That's crazy. So it's crazy. Me and AT and T got into it. I had to hire my own lawyers. 
ATT. <laughs> you talking about ATT, Sony ATT? No, AT and T. AT and T. Phone company. Oh, the phone company. Okay. Uh huh. Yes, I had to hire lawyers to share my rights to 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 get what was what was due to me. Wow. And then when I got my lawyers, and I won, and AT and T ready to pay me. Here come Tommy Boy. Well, we want what he want, but y'all ain't even helped me. Wow. So it's wow. a it's a very dirty game out there. Wow, 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 wow. It, it was a it was a very wow. dirty game, and that's it was the same thing. Only thing I've ever done, if I put my music out there, don't exploit my music, right? And people don't understand the game. And when you don't understand the game, they could tell you anything. Facts. But when somebody takes your music, and then that's another thing I got to break down, because even in certain instances, people don't know the difference between sampling and taking somebody's music. It's mm. two different things. Mm. Sampling is when you take a fragment of something and you create a whole entire composition. Taking somebody whole instrumental is not sampling. Right. That's thievery. <laughs> I'm just breaking that down. In right. Terms. And that's facts. That's facts. And if it's on YouTube or whatever, and it's being monetized as an artist, you are entitled to a percentage of that. Right. And right. you have the right to say, well, if you're doing Talk, this, talk to him. Let Talk me get the cut of this. If you're going to do this or that with my music, just make sure my publishing is there. Let's just make sure this is there. So you and your family can eat in the future because at the end of the day, this is why ownership is so incredibly, incredibly important. Right. Because... If I pass away today or tomorrow for some weird reason, your family, your estates own your music. Right. They own your music. And when you pass and it's sad, the value of your music goes through the roof. That, that's the saddest part of it all. And if you don't have your family in place to make sure they're getting everything that's owed to them, who guess who's going to get it all? Not you. You know, sampling, I'll tell you a Jew real quick. You could sample up to three notes. And I can break that down. If you look up the Beastie Boys, if you look up their lawsuit, they were sampled for three, using three notes, and they beat that case. So as an artist, you could sample up to three notes. The key is, is that they could still come to you if they they can show you that you took it off of a master. Right. That's the right. thing. But if you take two notes or, or a note and you create something creative, then yeah, you know, you can do that. Yeah. And I think people don't understand and you hear some people, you hear some people say, well, I... I don't sample because this and I don't sample because you got to clear it. The whole thing about it is you you don't sample because you don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> right. Right. If you are taking a fragment, that's what made the 90s incredible. People are taking notes and putting little horn hits and echoes and and doing some incredible shit with it off right. of using fragments. Right. Now, if you use the whole loop, yeah, you, you have to clear that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But if you know how to sample and you know how to pitch and time stretch and do all these incredible things, what are you worried about? Right. Now they got, you know, they got um, programs and stuff that helps you isolate frequencies. Right. If this shit don't right. help you, nothing ain't gonna help you. Hey, if you can't, man, I said that in a bar. I said, man, with all this technology and y'all still seem to make it sound trash. It's like how, how? I mean, it's the, I mean, 
you got so much stuff, it just it don't even make no sense. Because some people aren't from the world of limitation. Right. We're from the world of limitation where when the sample, when we didn't have enough sampling time or whatever, we had to get creative. And I'm going I'm to break that down in, in an analogy, right? The analogy right. is this. When we took tests, EA Ski, in school, yep. you had a scrap piece of paper. You had the test. You had a pencil. You had to show your work on a scrap piece of paper on how you got the answer on the test. Right. You had to show your work. Right. Some people, we were great at it. We were great at... um doing what we were doing you know some people's getting 80s getting 90s but now they allow you to take tests with calculators <laughs> and people like us is wondering why these motherfuckers are failing because if we had a chance to take with a calculator shit it would be in the hundreds all the time man it'd be so a whole new that brings me to the level of technology right now right the things they got is fucking George Jetson shit now compared to what we have. Right. And we're trying to understand why is the music sounding like this? Right. 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 Yes, you know, sir. That's we looking at it like, yo, y'all got all this and it can do this and it. What the fuck are y'all putting out? That's what I've been saying from day one. I said, I don't even understand this. I, you got all of this stuff, and it sounds like this. Like, it just, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. Yeah, I'm I'm just here dropping jewels because these are the jewels that I wasn't taught when I was in the game. And if I, I got this knowledge and I can pass it on and it can help you, then that's what I, I wanted to do. I wanted to help people. You know, you got to understand, people like me are problems. Not problems because I'm just being an artist and being naturally gifted. Problems, problems because I can awaken you. I can school you to things that we were getting fucked over on. Right. Right. So sometimes I believe that they create this division between us older artists and newer artists is because they don't want you to learn what we know. Right. If right. they could fuck you over from being blind, you think they want you to be around me if I got a pair of glasses for you? Right. Right. School them. School them, Nash. So, school them. School you know, them, baby. School when, them. When the, when the newer artists around the artistic or the icons, the legends, and, you know, be like, man, I was hanging with Lord Finesse. Oh, man, and this and that. Why are you hanging with him? What are he doing? What are you doing with him? They make it seem like it's a bad thing. Right. And it is a bad thing for them. Right. Because <laughs> right. schools you. Right. I right. can't fuck you over. Right. Right. So I got to make it seem like Ness is not relevant. He old school. He out of touch. Right. Right. Yeah, I believe Man, that. You know what, Ness? Everything you saying, bro, it's almost like an amen. 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 Like, you just hit so many. You hit so many trigger points, bro. Man, boy, you know, everything you said is exactly what I've been telling them. And I, I see people saying that I've been saying this. I said, you know what? This is why I have to have somebody that's credible on my platform. Because at the end of the day, I don't want people to think that this is just coming from my perspective. You have to talk to other people that, that have more values that they can see what's really going on. And your perspective is a mirror of what I've been saying. To this audience. Man, I just try to school you. I'm in my 50s. I'm proud of my 50s. Yes, I'm sir. Not, you know, I got my grades. I let my shit show. I don't use that <laughs> just for men. Because, fellas, you use that just for men. And you go visit a female, you might fuck up their whole pillowcase using that shit. So, <laughs> you know? So, hey, y'all um, didn't know that he got jokes, too, though. <laughs> yeah, nah. You know, it's a funny side to me. I'm not always serious. I'm serious when it comes to music. For and sure. I'm serious about um, pushing knowledge forward. I'm, I'm dead serious about that. For sure. 
But if you yeah. hung around me, you know, man, it's jokes all day. I love the joke. Hey, man, and I want to just tell people, I don't think people know even about me. Like, you know, I love joking. I love, like, people see the serious of me because I'm passionate about music. So people know me through music. So you're going to get that passion. You're going to get that fire from me because I care about the culture. I worked hard. I've walked up hills with crates of records. I've done a lot to be a part of this culture. So I'm not playing when it comes, and, and God has provided me a way to be in this business. I've never worked a day in my life. I've never had a nine to five in my life. I don't have time to ruin my blessings, playing around and playing with this music like this is a game. This is serious to me. This is my work. This is what I love. And I've been blessed to do it. And I want to be able to pass it down to another generation and give them a little guidance. Even if technology changed, I'm going to try to guide you where you get the foundation. The, you want to get the foundation because we know things are going to change. But when you have the foundation, it's going to help you add to what's going on and steady subtract. You don't want to subtract. You want to add. You want to take the foundation. Say, this is my foundation. Now I'm going to build onto the house off of the foundation. This is where you start seeing yourself start to prosper from your music. But what you're doing, you're trying to tear the whole foundation up and then build it with plastic bottles. Like, I don't know how you're going to have a strong foundation when you're tearing the foundation up and you're starting with a weak foundation. It's just no way that can it's, it happen. It brings me to saying that, like I said, I'm in my 50s. I still love music. I still travel. I'm still doing everything that I was doing in my 30s and 40s. But what it is is that... They try to disrupt you or discourage you by telling you it's a young man's game. Right. It's a young man's game, but it's a grown person's life. It's Facts. Different. Facts. So with that being said, I don't want the older cats to fuck up the timeline. Because when we were growing up, we looked up to the older people. We wanted to be like them. Right. We really wanted to to be like them. And um, what wound up happening is now that cats are getting older, right? Cats are getting older and they're trying to make you walk away from what you love to do. And we have to, just like we created what it was going to look like when you're in your 30s and 40s, we have to show you what it's going to be in your 50s. Right. You know, so if you choose to want to still follow the path, there are examples of artists in their 50s still having fun with the game. Right. Right. You know, if they discourage you, then they're going to top. They're going to stop the timeline. Right. If you in your 50s trying to act like you in your 20s with jeans sagging off your ass, you fucking up the timeline. That facts, facts, facts. You fucking up the timelines. Facts, facts, facts. So that's what I'm trying to push the timeline forward. So if you still want to do music, if you have a passion for it, you can still do music. Do not let nobody put an expiration on what you love to do. And you know what, Ness? Like I said again, they don't put no timeline on other journeys of music. It's right. always got to be our journey music, black music that has to seem like it has a timeline. Oh, you know, this is the cutoff. This is the cutoff. Right. I don't it ain't see, no cutoff. I, it's not a cutoff. It's not a cutoff. It's not it's a not. cutoff. You're right. You're right. So I'm always, if I can do incredible things in my 50s, then why not? You know, this don't don't cut, don't put an expiration on your gift. Right. That's why, you know, that's why I still tour, I still do the things that I do, because I I'm hoping to inspire my colleagues. Right. Because a lot of people are disgruntled, a lot of people are upset because they was fucked over. Right. They were truly fucked over. But 
I just tell them, do not take it out on the music. The music ain't do shit to you. Right. I ain't doing music no more. Right. Well, you're going to have, you know, you're going to put, you're going to get your regular job now. Right. I know. I don't, I wouldn't know what a regular job is like. Right. I oh. haven't had a regular job since I was a kid. And even then I was chose, I chose to take music over my job because he kept giving me these fucking weird hours. Right. And I'm like, Yo, man, right. I'm trying to go to the studio. Right. And he's like, well, you're going to have to take a choice. And, you know, I chose music and, you know, my grandmother was mad at me at one point. Yeah. And then she understood that this was my calling. This was my passion. And she supported me. Right. But I had to choose. And if you really want to do this, you got to wake up and want to do this. You can't take time off. I'm going to take a week off. I'll, I'll get back to it. Right. No. Right. Put your heart and soul into it and be consistent. You can only get nice by being consistent and surround yourself with people that's going to make you level up. Right. Still sharp and still. Exactly. You know, I was I was fortunate to be around a large professor, fortunate to be around show, fortunate to be around for men soaking these jewels, you know, and that's why I'm where I'm at today. And um, sometimes it's not about the accolades. It's just about you putting in a, a, a long list of work. Right. I'm going to speak for you long after you're gone. Right. And that's what I challenge people to do. Create something that's going to live after you're gone. Right. And that's right. not the music. That's just with life. Right. Whether it's bringing the children into the game, whether it's um, leaving something for your family. You know, just leave something that's going to last long after you're gone. Right. And you I have mean, a chance to do it. I mean, one of the biggest things that you said, man, is that, you know, still sharp and still. And this is the reason why we've been brothers for so long, because I could call you and you're like, Ski, man, you know about this. And you be so passionate about it. And I'm the same way. If I right. know something, I'm like, Ness, check this out. And. That's the love we have for the culture. A lot of people think that I'm on here because I don't have to be on this platform. Right. This, I, I don't think people understand. I got on this platform by the grace of God because I spoke on something I was passionate about, which happened to do with the Sakai thing. And the people embraced what I was saying. Yeah, you had people that was resistance. But at the end of the day, I was passionate about us getting, you know, the gears they're selling us. You know, I, I'm not feeling that. I'm just not feeling where they're taking it. So, but just get back, not to get on that real quick, just to go back to the passion that you have when I talk to you. And like like you was telling me, excuse me, you know about how Ableton could do this. And I remember you, not listen, y'all. I want y'all to understand this. This is coming from the heart. If y'all like this information, man, share, like, you know, saying follow. And not only that, you know, give a, sh a super thanks because this is important for y'all to know. This is real. This is not made up conversation. I talked to Ness. He was so excited about something that went on in Ableton that not only did this man tell me about it, he said, I'm going to do you one bigger. I'm going to make a video and I'm going to send it to you and I'm going to show you exactly how blah, 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 blah. This man took the time out his day. All the stuff he got it on family, all the stuff he could be doing as my brother to show me how to do something with a video and broke it down in a video. I don't know too many people that would give a shit. <laughs> they would just say, hey, man, this is what it is. Go check it out. Hey, man, God damn it. Bless you. And right. just keep it moving. Right. This man took the time out, shot a video, sent it to me. And and I learned it just by watching it because I'm a, I'm a visual person. Now, you can't just tell me nothing. I got to see it. I'm a repetitive person. I got to do stuff over and over. He sent it to me. But not only did he do that, he bought a drive. I paid him for this drive. And he put a bunch of stuff he had on the drive for me and sent it all the way to Cali. Took the time, And I'm talking about there's so much stuff on this drive. I, I don't even know what to do. You know what I mean? It's mind-blowing. 
these are the type of people I'm telling y'all, you have to surround yourself with people that care, that people that have passion. You don't want to be around complacent people. And this is a person that is not a complacent per this Man, guy right it, here. It, it goes back to, like I said, surround yourself with people that make you level up. I'm fortunate right. to have a queen that sent some music just like me. And we could talk music all day long. And she inspires me to work on stuff. And not that, oh, you're still doing this? And when you're <laughs> right. going to come back to bed? And, right. you know, right. you have to right. surround yourself with people that's going to help push you forward. Right. You know, and right. with, with music, like I said, I try to put people on the things that's going to cut your workload. Right. And um, when I when I say that, cut your workload to me it's whatever works for you. It's not the drum machine. It's not this. It's not that. It's whatever works for you. It could be an MP. It could be an ASR 10. It could be a SB 1200. It could be all these things. But what works for you? Don't don't let them sell you shit with this iPhone strategy now. They put right. one or two features in and now they want to sell you the same shit you just brought not too long ago. Bro. Bro. Y'all heard it from my let you heard it from my legendary homie. I've been telling you that, but to hear it from my legendary homie from a different perspective is the same perspective coming from a different person. That's facts. That's right. fine. Facts. Whatever works for you, if, if it's that little shit they make by rolling now, if it works for you, use that shit. It's not about following the masses. It's about you creating something that you feel great with and creating with something you feel great with. That's right. going to push you forward. That's right. what it's about. Thank you, Mr. You know, Mr. I stop. appreciate you. You know, because, you know, just like Ableton... I've showed a lot of my friends Ableton, you know, the way I use it and the way I feel it can help other people. And when I'm teaching them certain things about certain things, it's just if you want to learn something and you say, well, how you do this? I'm going to ask you, well, what are you trying to do? Don't try to do what I'm doing, because what I'm doing might be on a whole fucking other planet. You might right. really get lost in the source and, and be discouraged. Right. I ask right. you, well, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm I'm trying to do this. Okay, you could do that by boom, 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 boom. And I say that because a lot of times we go to YouTube to see these these things, and you got some motherfuckers that want to talk 15 minutes before what they're going to show you. That's going to be like five seconds. And you be like on that shit like, shut up already. I just want to learn so-and-so. <laughs> right, 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 right. There's been times I looked at... um clips on YouTube about Ableton and like I said, somebody's giving you a whole thesis on what they did before they get to the point. They got a million clips going. You more confused than ever now. Right. What I try right. to do with, with right. Ableton is just show you straight to the point. Oh, you want to chop a sample? Cool. Here's how you do it. Oh, you want to put it on beat? Here, cool. Here's, here, here's what you do. Hey, right. does this feature that might help you filter? Hey, it might do this. It might do that. My goal is to help you lighten your workload. Right. It's not to tell you all this other shit. Right. <laughs> Bro, you know, that's so real, man. That's a big reason why I've never been in Ableton. Because when I see those tutorials, I'll be like, man, there's no way I'm going to watch this. It already starts off bad just by the way they speaking. Yeah, man, you I'll, know, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, you know, we get into this and, and I'm like, oh, no, nah. I just, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I believe in the five second theory, just like making records. If you got five seconds, just tell me what you got to say. And if it starts off bad, I'm, I'm going to start clicking. Right. Definite, definite, definite. But, um, yeah, man, I'm, I just want to push the, the, the culture forward. And culture doesn't mean free. That's what people tend to fuck up to. Yeah. Is a do it for the culture. Do it for the culture. You know, no, people got time. Time is money. Time is money. 
Time, time is, is money. money. Right. So if I'm doing something that that I, I got to knock out because I got something to do, if I give you five or ten seconds of my time, it's me taking away from what I'm doing Thank you. to school you on something. Right. And you have to understand that. Like, people don't understand that. Even right. with with interviews or whatever, they go, hey, man, I want you to do this interview and, and blah, blah, blah. I have to take time away from what I'm doing to do your interview. That's bro. Man, and we I think we just chopped it up about that. We were just yeah. talking about how everybody, you know, like, hey, ski man, do this podcast, do this, do that. It's like, no, bro. Like, I'm not just doing podcasts, it's just be doing podcasts, man. I got things to do, man. Right. And all that stuff that you to ask me, I could do, I could do on my own platform. And then if you do get me to do an interview, don't ask me shit that's in the fucking bio. Right. Ask me right. something that's that's gonna be life changing to right. the people that's that's tuned into the interview. Right. Don't ask me what's your favorite color and fucking zodiac sign or whatever. Like, <laughs> ask me some real serious shit. Hey man, I'm I, I I have to laugh, man. This guy right here, boy, his analogies are so cold. It's it's ridiculous, man. This is why you a scientist. That's what you do. Your science and the way you operate, man, is crazy. I want to address something real quick before, you know, saying we um, shut it down. You know what I'm saying? Is um, you did a big rec record for Dr. Dre that I don't think a lot of people know about. You know, can you speak on that record? Uh, the, the record he's talking about is called The Message, right? Mm -hmm. And you're on YouTube, so you can look that up. Dr. Dre's The Message. And then you look up the original message, because that should be on YouTube, too. So it was a song that I did originally with um, Rel and uh, Crystal Johnson. And um, it wasn't called The Message. I didn't even have a title for it. It was just something that I felt was so incredible. And I kind of kept it stashed. I knew I wanted to use it. And then when I was out there in L.A., Melman was like, yo, Play that Chinese joint, because Melman called it the Chinese joint. Mm. You know, play that Chinese joint. So I yeah. played the Chinese joint. Dre wasn't even in the room. I guess when the door opened and he heard, you know, he was like, yo, Mel, what's, what the fuck is that shit? Fucking yeah. that's playing. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's that, that's that joint. Yeah. Nah, if you got a placement, you need a, a regular a regular lawyer. You don't need no litigator <laughs> to negotiate. <laughs> but so Melman, you know, Melman was like, yeah, man, that's that's Nest joint right there. Yo, man, yeah. you think he'll sell it? So I don't I don't know, man. That's his joint right there. Right. And when I thought about his shit, I'm like, man, you fucking Dr. Dre. This shit shit going to go further than I had dreams. Of right, right, shit. right, right, right. So, you know, I got to produce the message for, for Dr. Dre. And um, it, it was it was big. I got to do suicidal thoughts for for Notorious Big. I got to do fucking uh, Channel Ten for Capone and Noriega. I got to do you know the hip hop hip hop underground classic for Trends of Culture, off and on the video version one, not wow. the you know. So I got to do that and and a lot of other work. Man. It was just fun to be able to create to work with artifacts to work with. Brand Nubians, all these different different artists, and I think right now I'm at a point where, oh yeah, I put no Buckwild did the graveyard for um Big L. I did the title track Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. I did Fed Up with the Bullshit. I did Street Struck. I did MVP, and I did All Black. So I did five joints on Big L's first joint, along with joints like School Days and Unexpected Flavor. And yes, I. <clears throat> If you want to hear something I did recently is Motown State of Mind, where I was playing this club out in L.A. And um, one of the owners from, well, one of the workers in Universal was there, my man Dre. He was one of the, the execs in, um, U, in Universal at the time, and he heard it. He heard me doing all these different mashups in the club, and shit was hot. He was like, yo, you want to do an album like that? And they gave me the masters to the Motown songs, and I were able to, um, what did I do? Uh, I did uh, 
uh, Michael Jackson, Jackson Tribute. I did the Marvin Gaye, I Want You. I know it's one. Woo! It's the one you see Dr. Dre playing on Defiant Ones. Yes, it's the same one. It's the exact same one. It's no, hey, you know, no, nah, it's two different ones. No, same one. That is so cool. Um, I did um I Wanna Be Where You Are. Uh I did uh, Eddie Kendricks, um, Body Talk. I went back and took a, a joint from Sisters Love. It was in uh it was in a, um the movie The Mac. Mm. And I took those reels from the Mac and recreated that song. I did the barge. I like it. I think is if you definitely want something to cruise around to and, and vibe out to, definitely pick up Motown State of Mind. But they tapped me again, and I did a Barry White remix for Never Never Gonna Give You Up. It was a joint that I did for Valentine's Day. Check that out. It's the Bossman remix Great. for Never Never Gonna Give You Up. So Great. I'm in negotiation on doing some more stuff like that. But I'm also putting putting two labels together. One is gonna be like for for live uh, music, and then um, one is gonna be for hip hop. But the hip hop, I'm very selective because I want to just do a label. Like back in the days, we had these labels that no matter what they put out, you just picked up, right? Because it was dropping so much heat. Anything on cold chilling, you just snatched. Oh, back. Cold chilling. Get yeah. that. Cold chilling profile. If you seen Next Plateau. Next Plateau. Yeah. So I want my bags. label. I want my label to be the same thing. I don't just want right. to drop records to drop records. I want to drop shit that when you see, oh, I got to get that. This oh, right. You know, and to me, that's what music is about. It's about creating. If you do music. And you can only do one or two things with it. That means your music ain't good enough. You want music that's going to be put in, in fucking soundtracks and TV shows. Think ahead. Think global. Right. Stop right. thinking tri-state. Think right. global. Because it's, it's so many places you can go with music these days. And we're just thinking, hey, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do some shows. No. Right. Right. You know, your catalog is only as good as the music you put in it. Facts. Facts. You know, so you got Facts. two hot joints and a hundred joints of fluff. How good is your catalog? One more Facts. last thing I want to talk about is, you know, we talk about, we was talking about, uh, I want to talk about mixtapes, right? And tell you the difference. When we was trying to get on back in the days, <clears throat> we, uh, we did demo tapes. And um, because I'm saying this because people run up, listen to my mistake, listen to this, or listen to the CD, and, and I'm gonna break it down to you. So we did these um demos, and um what happened was we worked on these shits for like a year or so because we wanted to make the perfect demo to get signed. So, you know, when you sent your tapes out to these labels, you knew you had a great shot because it was hot. And if they called you, you just felt like it was the world. The gratification was incredible. Right. Now, bring it up to this age of hip hop, uh, this, this, when they're doing the mixtapes. Now, you got to understand, if you're doing a mixtape and you got 12 to 14 to 16 chances to prove to the world you're the most incredible artist this world has yet to hear, I am the shit. You got 12 to 16 chances to do 12 to 16 opportunities to put the most incredible songs you could put on there. So pardon me if you're on your third or 14 or your fourth mixtape and I don't really want to hear it because it's like that means you got like motherfucking 36 songs out there and you don't have a buzz. Right. And that's telling you, it don't take you 36 songs to get a buzz. That's right. That's it right. It don't. That's right. You know, people right. got like fucking three regular mixtapes, and then you got a fourth tape mixtape, the best of. The yeah. best of the shit that we don't know already. Right. So all I right. say, if you're going to take, if you're going to get in this field, 
you know, take this shit serious. Take it serious. Man, listen, and we're going to end it off on that, man, because at the end of the day, man, we can go on and on. We got so much knowledge, and sometimes you got to just get a little bit by a bit, a little bit by a little bit. But this man has dropped so much knowledge on y'all from a legality to the whole industry, to the integrity, to just, you know, never giving up on your dreams. And the most key thing that he said was you got to take this seriously, man, because I know people look at music and they see all these videos and they see all of the, you know, the cars and the women and they, they like this lifestyle, but they don't know that it's way more different than what you see. You know, you have to really be in there working. You have to really be in there taking your crafts here. You have to practice. You know, so many people feel like because there's so much technology and you can do stuff doesn't make you great at what you're doing because the, the technology has allowed people to think that they're greater than what they are. Right. You have to learn whatever it is. Whatever it is you're doing, you have to study it and you have to practice it and you have to put in those hours of work Ness has been working for years and still works. Still is very meticulous. Man, still when in I get there. off of this, I got to finish. I'm working on this new SB1200 project. It's going to be more on that. I got so much stuff that's getting ready to... I'm just planning right now. You know, that's what I've been doing. I'm a background dude. So if you don't see me out front and I'm not in front of cameras, don't mean a person ain't doing shit. That's where we get it mixed up, that if a person ain't in front of the camera constantly, a motherfucker ain't doing nothing. Right. Most people, me, right. I appreciate the background and being in the cut and doing what I do quietly. Like, I don't, I don't need that. And I want to add on that, Ness, like, People don't understand the people that's in the background are some of the most powerful people in the game. I, I got can, a series I, coming out on stuff like that. Yeah, I got, coming. I got several people in my head right now that I can tell you, if they walked in right past you, you wouldn't know how powerful they are because they're never in front of the camera. They never in the press. They never really in a bunch of, you know, functional engagement. They move in silence, but they're some of the most powerful people in the game. Well, don't to build on that, to do that, you have to be a secure individual. Facts. If you're Facts. not a secure individual, then you feel you always got to be out there because if I don't, I don't be out there, you know, they, they hit you with the bullshit like, right. yo. Out of sight, out of mind. No, right. that's for y'all motherfuckers that's, that never made an impact. That, and that's in, oh, woo! Say it again. If you never, again. If you never made an impact, then yeah, you're afraid that if you out of sight, out of mind. But when you put your work in, you never out of mind. Facts. Don't let them run that bullshit on you. Facts. But like I said, you have to be secure with who you are to understand that. Facts. That is... Man, that is one of the coldest things. If you've never made no impact, then it would make sense you out of sight, out of mind. That makes so, man, that's facts. When you make impact, you don't have to be out of sight. You've made your impact. People are thinking about your impact even when you're not around. Definitely. That is, that is, that is factual, man. That Definitely. is direct, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate Salute, you, direct. direct. Man, di hey, Direct got a dope channel, man. You seen Direct's channel? Uh, nah, Ness? not, not he yet. Got, hey, he got a channel where he talks about some of the older equipment, and it's like, what had happened was, and, and he goes into it, it's super dope. Y'all go mess with my brother Direct, man. He is Definitely. fire, man. Fire. Fire. You will love him, man, because he talks about the SB1200, what had happened from that when it came out, ASR10s, just all the old vintage stuff. But he'd be on point. But it'd be funny. But it'd be real. He He's dope with it, though. He got a dope I'm channel. Check it out. I'm going to check yeah, he it got out. A dope, he Word. has a dope channel. Salute to you, Direct. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Now, the SB1200 created the drums. The rest of that was played. So that's not a sample. People be thinking that message joint is a sample. It's played. Right. 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 I mean, and you know what? I want to add this, too to the table too you got a dope series that you started that is so fire where you redoing the uh i'm the about SP to take that to such another level i had a, an incredible zoom call meeting about that and um i got i got two docu-series i'm working on as well as a book mm. so 
these are the things that I'm in the background doing, but I think y'all going to love the docu-series is going to be deep. If you like what I'm saying on here, I'm only expanding on that even more. But, you know, having incredible people to help me get the message across with real with real information. I just want people to be up on real information. Fuck the hearsay shit. Right. Just some shit that you could walk away with and can use in your everyday life. Right, right. You know, man, bro, Vanessa, you have inspired not only myself, but a lot of people. A lot of people hit me, especially when I started, you know, talking about the Ronson SB1200 and people. And I mean, your name is anonymous with it. You and Pete Rock. You know what I mean? And um, and I've just been telling people, man, like, you are my guys when it comes, like, you know, I'm, I've always been more of an NPC. I've pretty much have mastered that NPC. That's that's who I am, you know? Right. I'm an NPC guy. Nah, I, it took I, me a while. We always talk that the NPC 4000 is yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. But the SB1200, I'm good at. But y'all have done it in a way, you know. I've I've I brought it into more of a West Coast direction. Y'all got that real classic boom bap. I mean, when y'all put y'all foot into it, it is not a game. It's it's not a game. And I I salute y'all, man, because not only with your series, man, showing and and giving them a lot of people be scared or they feel like they can't give these jewels out. They feel like I gotta hide it. I gotta hide it. I gotta keep it tough. I'm not gonna share. I don't want to share. It's like, bro, that is our job right. is to and and inspire people to see some of these things. And what you're doing, I don't see that. I, I only know myself that's really trying to inspire like that. I what I'm seeing from you is so dope. And that was the first thing I did. I hit you up and said, I said, Ness, that's dope. I said, that's yeah. dope. Hey, that's nah, we, we gonna build, we're gonna build more on it. Trust me. Man, what, what I got coming up shortly in the future it's it's gonna be dope you gotta be a part of it because it's it's gonna be some shit man I, bro you know i got man come on man you know this how is we get more down. hands on this is more like direct this is more like like i said this shit is like food for thought minus the carbs mm. Mm. man mm -hmm. you know i man you know i'm gonna call away you know all you gotta do is pick up the phone. You know I'm I'm on deck, bro. You know you know how we ride. Definitely. You know, I'm, a, I'm a real rider. I don't I don't play. When you nah, call, we, I'm like, come on, man. You already know. Up? I know. You know you I'm a know rider. I know. You know that. And shout out to Freddie Fox too, Bumpy Knuckles, man. Ah, uh, my brother. Man, Bump. shout out to Bump, man. Shout out to him, man. The connection and the, he's another real one that's putting it down for the culture, man. Nothing but select, man. He's been a legend for a long time and still doing great things, man. I just want to salute to you for putting us and, and bridging us together, man. And I want to give that shout out to him as well, man. I really appreciate that, man. Yeah, man. But you already know how to find me. Just hit me up. Yes, sir. Yes, uh -huh. sir, man. Hey, man, I want y'all to give a big shout out to my brother, man. We can talk all day. We normally talk all day. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Away from this. Exactly. But I want to give y'all a little bit. I told y'all would. Y'all ask for it. I want to bring it to y'all, man. This man is my brother, man. I love this dude to death, man. And just keep watching what my brother do because he got a lot of great all things. Right, that so it's about on. to get crazy. It's going to get crazy. Yes, it's sir. It's going to get crazy. Salute to everybody in the room. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, man, enjoy your time out there, brother. Hit me when you get back, bro. We'll definitely do that. All right, bro. All right. Salute. Peace. Peace. Yeah, there you have it, y'all. The legendary Lord Finesse. I told you what I was going to do. I told you what I was going to do. I told you I mean what I say, y'all. I mean what I say. You know what I mean? We're here to push the culture forward, and we want to give it to the ones that want it. And I appreciate all the donations and the super thanks. That means a lot to me. And y'all was able to showcase that while he was on the video to showcase the love and the respect that y'all have for the information that I'm trying to give you and bring to the table. And so I appreciate y'all showing that love in front of my brother and treating him with the utmost respect. I salute everybody that's on here that understand that 
we have put down a lot for the culture and we're here to try to give you information. There's not me or him or any of my legendary friends that I mess with. We're here to inspire you. We're not here to take away from you. So if you hear any information that makes you feel like it hits you a certain way, it's not out of being mean. It's out of trying to inspire you to think differently and start thinking about how you move forward towards trying to achieve your goals, because that's what it's really all about is do you want to achieve your goals or do you want to be in a complacent space where you just keep being on that treadmill? I'm trying to push y'all forward. That brings me to this. The converter drums are dropping Monday. I worked on those drums hard so I could give y'all something to be inspired by. So y'all can start working and start making dope beats and just start going and knowing that these drums, you could depend on these drums to come through for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I took the time out to make these drums within a short period of time because normally it takes me longer, but I got busy because I got blessed by Heritage Audio. I got blessed by Focus Right. You know what I'm saying? To have some of this gear to make me be inspired to work on these things. So I just want y'all to know, man, that I'm here to try to keep y'all inspired and Y'all support when when I'm dropping these things, it helps me want to fire to do even more things for y'all. I shout out to everybody that's went and bought the converter shirts. Y'all are holding it down. All the people that send the shirts, man. Shout out to Vicky, man. Vicky is my moderator. If you see Vicky on here, she is the one y'all dealing with. When y'all when y'all reach out to easki.com, she is making sure y'all shirts get out. She's making sure stuff can handle. If there's any confusion, she's on it. She is on her A game. Let's give a big shout out to Vicky for everything that she's doing to, uh, to keep the platform running smooth so everybody is cool. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. I appreciate you uh, with the Neem drums. I'm glad you enjoy them. I appreciate everybody. Go out, get the converter shirts. You can get them right now. And once you get the shirts and take a picture, I'm sending everybody the need drums. And that's only for the ones that get those. And this Monday, we got the converter drums coming. All right? Be ready. Be ready. They coming. And they are crazy.